Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I've just been told we're ahead of schedule, so I can take as long as I want to talk. So uh, I think uh, the organizers might be sorry they said that to me. Um, so I'm here to tell you about Neuromod. Uh, we are uh, an Irish growth stage medical device company. We're headquartered in Ireland, in Dublin, and we have US offices in Lille, in Illinois. We employ about 50 people at this stage, um, and we are the inve inventors of Lanier, which is the, the first and only FDA-approved and CE-marked bimodal neuromodulation device for the treatment of moderate, severe, and uh, catastrophic tinnitus. So Lanier is a, is a device that's prescribed by ENTs and audiologists, but it's a home use device itself is administered by the patient in the comfort and privacy of their own home. They use it for 30 to 60 minutes per day uh, uh, for a minimum of 12 weeks. And the device essentially delivers sound through Bluetooth headphones combined with trigeminal nerve stimulation that's done non-invasively using an intraoral electrode that we call the tongue tip. So, about 6% of the adult population suffer from uh, moderate, severe, and catastrophic tinnitus. Um, so we, we engaged the BCG, the Boston Consulting Group, to uh, do, a, do a report on the, the, you know, the, the value opportunity in this market segment. And their analysis showed that there are about 550 million people in the developed world suffering from this more bothersome uh, end of the, of the tinnitus scale. They, they estimate that the, the total global retail market value uh, for a product like Lanier is over $5 billion. And the, the dynamics are very much in our favor. There's, there's actually a very well-established clinical pathway for tinnitus patients within ENT and audiology. The, the doctors are there, the patients are already in their care. The problem uh, and the challenge to unlock the opportunity has been that the doctors have not had an effective treatment to prescribe these patients until now. So it's largely a self-pay market, so hearing aids, hearing devices tend to be largely self-pay with limited, with limited uh, reimbursement. But the current standard of, of care for tinnitus is, includes hearing aids, which are not effective for these more bothersome forms of tinnitus, and also CBT and psychological counseling, which are simply too burdensome and too slow to really deliver any meaningful benefit for this untreated population. Uh, that means that there's practically no competition for, for this segment. Uh, and unlocking the opportunity has the ability to grow the total global hearing market by up to 30%. So it's currently at around 17, between 17 and 18 billion retail globally. So you're talking about adding a $5 billion untapped opportunity uh, on top of that. At this point, the company has completed all major development milestones. Uh, we have a uniquely effective product that slots very neatly into ENT and audiology practices. Uh, we have demonstrated consistent efficacy, um, safety, and patient tolerability now in thousands of patients. Uh, and that includes you know, uh, multiple clinical trials, large-scale clinical trials, and also a growing body of real-world evidence. So we've done three large-scale clinical trials. The first two were published in high-tier, high internationally recognized peer-reviewed journals, Nature and Science. Uh, the third large-scale clinical trial was designed in collaboration with the FDA. It was a controlled trial where we, we compared bimodal versus sound therapy. And that was the basis for our de novo approval in March of this year. So that's currently in peer reviewed and will be published later this year or early next year. Uh, we, have, we have, as I said, FDA approval. We're the first and only uh, treatment for this, this category, moderate, severe, and ca catastrophic tinnitus. Uh, and we also have, have CE marking uh, for, for Europe. Our manufacturing is fully transferred, fully industrialized, ready to scale. Our supply is supply chain is completely protected. Our um, third-party logistics are fully in place. Uh, we're protected by a rock-solid IP position. 
We have 134 patents granted in 37 countries. They span across four patent families, which have date back to 2010. So we have the earliest and largest IP portfolio in this space. And then most importantly, at this stage now, we have a proven uh, and scalable commercial model. So we have rapidly growing revenues. We are very tightly tracking our commercial and clinical KPIs, and they are exceeding all expectations. Uh, so Lanier is very attractive a very attractive proposition to private practice audiologists and, and ENTs. Um, and there are multiple reasons for that. It helps them to expand their practice. So it allows them to add a revenue line that, that wasn't there before. So now they're, they, they can see tinnitus patients, they can hire more, more staff and see these patients and get a direct revenue line from them. But it also, the, the feedback we're getting from all our partners is that it also drives synergistic growth in their existing revenue lines. So the more tinnitus patients they see, the more hearing aids they see, the more balanced patients they see, because there, there are such uh, co-occurring co comorbidities between those conditions. Lanier also enables clinics to clinically specialize to differentiate themselves from their competition. That is going to become more and more and more important as time goes on because there are some adverse industry headwinds that are kind of coming down the tracks like a steam train for, for private practice audiologists and ENTs. Uh, and they are the over-the-counter legislation in the US, the, uh, the entrance from the, the, of the big box retailers, the Costco's, the Best Buy's, and also then third-party payers, these insurance companies who are coming in. So Lanier helps differentiate and protect from these headwinds. In addition, it also has the added advantage that it attracts a much younger uh, profile of patient into that kind of lifelong care of expert audiologists. So the tinnitus patients tend to be in their 20s, 30s, 40s. Uh, so audiologists are getting them in the door kind of one to three hearing aid sales cycles earlier than they would normally be coming in. So, and a lot of these patients do have, have a concomitant hearing loss, so there are multiple upsale opportunities for audiologists. So this is why we are getting a very, very strong provider demand from both audiologist practices and ENT practices in the US. And the really smart movers and the recognized leaders in audiology retail are, are recognizing these adverse headwinds. They know that this is coming down the track. They know that over the counter, big box and third party are just gonna put more and more pressure on their, on their margins and they're, they're driving their profits down. Um, so the smart movers are getting into, they're moving into clinical specialization now ahead of that. So if you want to, if you want to become more specialized in clinical audiology, you, there's three places you can go. You can go tinnitus, you can go pediatrics, or you can go balance. Pediatrics is, is relatively small. Uh, balance requires a lot of upfront of a capital investment for the practice. So tinnitus is by far the largest and easiest to get into, and that's why you know, we're, we're seeing that uh, a lot of, of audiologists are, are pushing now to, to get access to Lanier. So we're, we're now, we've we got FDA approval in March and we've just completed our phase one rollout. We did this with 14 clinics um, and we did it in a way where we could track our commercial KPIs very tightly uh, and our clinical KPIs and that we could, you know, iron out any kinks that were in our, our clinical or commercial um, processes. We're now, as we speak, we have two tra training events in the US where we're onboarding our phase two partners. That's another 50 doctors uh, across 29 practices. Um, and our aim was to, to follow that up. We're gonna follow it up with 50, a uh, further 50 practices in February. And our target was to get to over 150 practices by the end of 2024. We now have over 500 uh, additional practices who are pushing hard to get Lanier because, you know, the word is spreading from these audiology retail leaders, you know, what, what a great uh, addition to, to the practice Lanier is. And so we're getting an unprecedented demand from the, from, the, from the providers. So we're looking at how can we ramp this up more aggressively now, you know, go beyond that 150 and see how, how many of these 500 can we onboard by the end of, end of next year. So there are two aspects of our commercial, of our US business. One is the, is the private practice, but the other is governmental services. 
So the Department of Veteran Affairs is the largest purchaser of hearing instruments globally. They, um, and tinnitus is their number one and fastest growing cause of service-connected disability. So if you look at their annual benefits reports, which I obsessively do every year, uh, you will see that it's, it's, it's growing much faster than any of the other conditions. So right now there are over 2.7 million veterans uh, that, have, that have tinnitus. It's costing the agency over $4.9 billion annually in compensation of payments alone, and then the treatment will be on top of that. Uh, so we, this is obviously a huge opportunity for us. We want to get in there and help these guys. Um, the, we're trying to you know, establish support for Lanier at both the executive level and at the grassroots level. And we're getting very, very good traction at both. I'm glad to say that we've made our first f sales into four of the major VA hospitals so far. So, but it takes a bit of time. So we're working through the process of getting on their, their, uh, you know, their federal supply schedule and their road systems, et cetera. So we'll, over time, we'll, we'll hope to dramatically ramp sales in the VA. The US DOD is also uh, another uh, major player in the governmental services side. It's a, tinnitus is one of the, the largest um, disabilities affecting mission readiness among active military personnel. So we, we've also established partnerships with Walter Reed and other uh, DOD hospitals in addition to the, to the VA ones. Uh, so the, the short term growth focus is going to be on the US. Um, we obviously that's where we're, we're, we're seeing the, the fastest uptake, but we are continuing to expand commercial availability in Europe. Uh, and we're looking to Canada, Australia, and Asia uh, for our real growth opportunities in 2025. So that's it. So if anybody wants to talk to me you know, further about Neuromod or Lanier, I'll be happy to do so. Here are my contact details, or I'll also, I'll also be around if, uh, if you want to grab me for a coffee. All right. Thank you.